In this video, we're going to look at a very common question that we get at IELTS Advantage, which is, if I repeat a word, will it lower my score in the writing test and the speaking test? And if you make the key mistake that most students make, it will probably lower your score and you will get a lower score than you deserve. What I'm going to do is show you the three options that you have and just break everything down into easy to understand language and um, so that you can understand how important it is to avoid this key mistake. So we're going to focus on this, the start of this question, and we'll focus on this word. So often you will get a key word in a question, and because it is a key word, you will have to mention that word many times throughout your essay. And if you go into most IELTS classrooms or look at most IELTS books or YouTube videos, the most common advice that students get is do not repeat words. Let's look at whether this common advice is correct or not using logic and common sense. So the first option is use an accurate synonym. So synonyms are words that are different, but they mean the same, like female and woman, for example. So we could put impoverished. Many impoverished countries means the same thing as many poor countries. So that's our first option. The problem with option one is that most students don't have a wide enough range of vocabulary in order to do this many times throughout the essay. And that in itself is not a huge problem. Most of the students that we work with don't have a problem so much with the range of vocabulary that they have. What most people have a problem with is understanding what improves your score and what actually lowers your score. Option two is to take a chance. So to change it to, what does take a chance mean? It means to change it to something that you're not 100% sure if it is accurate, if it means the same thing, but you think that it might be correct. So for example, you might say measly. So measly and poor are synonyms, but they actually have quite different meanings. And if you said many measly countries, this would be completely wrong, even though they are synonyms. Or you might change it to something like paltry. Again, they are synonyms, but they mean very different things. There are close synonyms, synonyms that mean basically exactly the same thing. And then there are very loose synonyms. They are synonyms, but they don't really mean the same thing. So this would be wrong because what you are indicating to the examiner is you don't really understand the meaning of these words. So by changing the words to measly and paltry, you are not increasing your score, you are decreasing your score because you're demonstrating that you do not know how to use these words. Even though they're quite complex words, they're quite high level words, it's not about using high level words, it is about using words that are accurate. Or we had another student when I gave this exercise to our students that said meager. And meager and poor are actually much closer synonyms than measly and paltry, but they spelt it wrong. Right? The spelling is wrong. Again, you are lowering your score. If you're using words that you don't understand fully and you're taking a chance, then the meaning might be wrong, the spelling might be wrong, it might be inappropriate, the style might be wrong. There's so many things that could be wrong. Why do students do this? Because the common advice that most people are given is do not repeat a word. So this forces students to use words inaccurately because most of the time their vocabulary is not wide enough to accurately change the word over and over and over again. Option three is repeat the word. So use the word poor. So option one 
is the best option. But if you have a choice between repeating the word and using something that you're not sure about, it is much better to repeat the word than it is to use something that is wrong. If you disagree with me, then you are blindly following what people tell you because you believe that they're experts rather than understanding logic and common sense. So the big mistake that we see every single day is students choosing option two. This will produce an essay that is unclear, difficult to understand. The examiner will not know whether you've answered the question or not because most of the words they won't understand them. You will get a lower score for vocabulary and you'll probably get a lower score for grammar because if you don't understand these words, you won't understand the words around them and your grammar will suffer. In other words, your essay will be a complete mess. It's what we call a headache essay. It gives the examiner a headache because it is nearly impossible to understand what is going on. This is not as good as this, but it is much better than this. And you might look at this and say, well, my teacher, told me that if I repeat a word, I'll get a low score. Well, ask them this. Imagine you write a great essay, like a band eight essay, and you have clearly understood the question, clearly answered the question, everything is clear, well-structured, well-organized, logical, easy to understand, great grammar, lots of option ones, and you repeat the word. Would an examiner ever look at that essay and go, oh, they repeated one word, let's give them a band five. That is not how an examiner thinks about your essay. What they will look at is, okay, they changed some of the vocabulary and it was correct. They've repeated some of the words, but that doesn't mean they necessarily have bad vocabulary because they'll look at your entire essay and look at all the vocabulary in your entire essay and make a judgment holistically on the totality of your essay, not because you repeated one word.